Speaker, from the Department of Corrections. Question number four, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, to the Minister of Finance, why doesn't his budget's net debt track take into account lost dividends from SOEs and sales costs arising from his policy of privatising state assets? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, because uh, final decisions have not been made about the mixed ownership model, in fact the government has been very clear uh, that it would only proceed with that if it, after it had laid out its plans to the New Zealand voter. Uh, and it had managed to get re-elected. Question number... Oh, does the member have a supplementary question? The question. David Cunliffe. Uh, given, wait that, all day. given that the Minister has banked in Budget 2011... Point of order, the Honourable Trevor uh, Mr Speaker, um, I, I, you know, while I think some of us don't mind some jovial encouragement from you and the Chair, um, that is not the sort of comment you use to ministers when, they've, when they miss their opportunity to get questions. I think, sir, that... Well, order. Uh, the, it, member is, the member is quibbling with what I've, I've just done, and that's not, not a matter of order. I've, I was about to call Kevin Haig. I was surprised at the member, but uh, members can't expect the House to wait for them necessarily, uh, and that's not unreasonable. I, you know, th th some members uh, do take too long to get to their feet and occasionally being reminded that they should take their call. There's no bad thing in itself. It's not the end of the world. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think, I think we do need to look at this carefully, sir. I think, I think your role is a referee, not a commentator. Well, order. <laughs> order, I don't think I need such lectures. The Honourable David Cunliffe wishes to ask his supplementary question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Given that the Minister's 2011 budget has already booked the proceeds of those asset sales for which he has just confirmed he lacks a mandate, did his government's budget 2011 fiscal strategy report set the upper net debt ceiling at 35 per cent? And what guarantee can he offer that his policies won't break this limit when his budget does not properly account for the costs of his government's plan to sell public assets? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the 35 per cent ceiling is uh, well above uh, where we expect net debt to peak, which will be just, just under 30 per cent. But I think this is going to be more of an issue for the member, because if he says he's going to uh, book, use a capital gains tax to offset uh, sales of assets, he can't count the dividends because they are still in the budget now. So he can't add dividends from retaining state assets. They're already in the, they're still in the budget. Aaron Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister of Finance. Assuming that 49% of the energy SOE companies were sold, what impact would this have on the operating balance, and what would the size of the Crown's future commercial assets be? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr. Speaker, it, dep it would depend a bit on the price, but if you use last year's valuations, our annual interest costs, cost, interest costs would fall by $400 million annual dividends would fall by about $185 million, leaving the operating balance about $215 million better uh, than would otherwise be. The Hon. David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, to the Minister, if these SOE assets yield low returns as he claims, and given Treasury says efficiency gains from privatisation are likely to be moderate at most, wouldn't power prices have to rise to make these new companies attractive to investors? Or will he now admit that these assets are already highly profitable, which is why foreign buyers that he's met like China Investment Corporation want to buy them, and why it doesn't make sense to sell them? The Honourable uh, Bill English. No, Mr Speaker. No, no, that is not the case. And... And of course, the, the measure of poor performance of the last Labor government is that despite the fact that power prices went up 70 per cent in eight years, these companies actually paid very poor dividends. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, why doesn't the Minister just admit what all New Zealanders already know, that he's booked the proceeds of selling state assets in his budget before he has a mandate to sell them and without booking the lost dividends that he must take down if he goes to 51 per cent. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, no, no, Mr Speaker, that's, that's, um, that's uh, not, not the government's position. 
The fact is the government needs to keep investing in its core IT systems and ultra-fast broadband and rebuilding Kiwi Rail, and we have arranged the budget so that we'll be able to use the proceeds of a partial sell-down of electricity companies for very real capital needs of the core state sector, which will continue to grow. Question number 